you need a website. Why not do it yourself? Oh. With Wix, it's easy. That didn't get muted. <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. This is not a sponsored video. <laughs> but it almost ended up being almost. one. Almost. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing fantastic today. It's Cosmic Owl Day. Hey, John. Hello. John is on the mic here. He's also on all of these crazy cameras. We have Pal Cam. We have a straight-on cam. We have this robotic cam that follows me around. And we have that so that you guys can follow all of the action and because painting is so full of action. But so you can see what's happening because what you can see, you can do, you can accomplish. Um, if you look in the iCard, there's a bunch of goodies. There is, it's, if you're coming on the live, we do these live three times a week. If you're here for the live, it's processing. <laughs> a drawing tutorial on how you would sketch this in. Also, there's a link to a big art quest that explains in very deep detail the materials and mediums that are involved in the background of this. This painting, Cosmic Owl, was from a series of daily paintings I did when in 2013? Mm, yeah. Yeah, a while back I did in 2013 where I painted every single day, no matter how I felt, <laughs> no matter if I was sick, and just kept putting out paintings and putting out paintings and going to the easel every day, which was really one of the best things I ever did in my life. And Cosmic Owl was one of my breakthroughs. I think you remember when I created him. Mm-hmm. Right. I just was like, this is how it's all coming together. I started pulling different mediums and techniques that I loved and I started putting them all into uh, pieces that I loved. And he came out of that. And I feel like he's so spiritual and he's so uplifting. But I've never been able to teach him before online in this way. Yeah. But we've done some clever things. I'm going to put him to the side here. And my little reference photo. This is in the description below. If you'd like the reference photo of the uh, barn owl. Mm -hmm. I love barn owls. I think they're the most mysterious owl. Do you? Yes, I do. I just feel like they're beautiful and mysterious. What is going on with this thing right here? Is it giving you trouble? Yeah, it is. That's okay. So we have this background pre-prepared, <laughs> <laughs> which was quite a whole thing because I have to do that. The reason I haven't ever taught these online is because the process leading up to it is intensive. It's not difficult. It's not that I don't think you can do it. It's just... You have to do a coat and then wait a few hours, and you have to do a coat and wait a few hours on the absorbent ground, materials and information in the description below, more mm -hmm. information in the iCard. And then you have the inks and the washes and those techniques, and they all take a long time to dry. Yeah. Like a long time. So I was like, well, I could show it in time lapse, which I have in the deer and the eagle and a couple other pieces that I've done. I've shown this technique in time lapse, mm -hmm. but I haven't really been able to show you guys how you could do it. So I'm so excited today to show you how you could do it. Okay. Is everyone excited to learn everyone how they can do it? Everyone is very excited. All right. So in your resource kit, I'm going to go again, iCard, <laughs> there's a drawing tutorial that really just covers all the elements of drawing. Now, I'm actually really proud of that tutorial. Yeah. There's also a quest called Big Art Quest, and it is about absorbent ground, which is one of the golden absorbent ground, mm -hmm. which is a necessary material for this. It covers another unnecessary material, the transparent uh, high flow paints. Oh, yeah. These things are amazing. They're one of my favorite tools in the art studio. I was so excited when they came out. The pigment load on them is insane. Oh, yeah. It's just insane. It's off the chain. You don't really see it till you work with them. It's pretty spectacular, and they're very, they're like water, and you can splash them and splatter them and be crazy. We also have fluid paint, which is the soft body paint. It's thicker than the high flows. It is different. Another weird material is alcohol. Yes. This one's 91%. I do think you can do it with the lower level of alcohol. These are created alcohol layering or resist, and it's part of the technique. So sketch this. Can we play how this is done. Oh, sure. Hold is on. that possible? Oh I don't gosh. know. I think it is. <laughs> you just caught me off guard because I'm like... Don't I'm... worry. We haven't forgotten wishes. We just... Okay. Well, we could, we could talk about witches now while you're getting on... Oh, there you go. Oh, I've got it here. So you got it there. Here. Let me do this. I All will... Right. So John has it here. This is the clever thing we did so we could do this live with you. Are you guys ready? Here we go. So now I have coated this canvas in three coats of absorbent ground by Golden. And I'm using yellow ochre, titanium white, burnt sienna, cad red medium, and dog purple. 
and I'm creating washes and mixes. So my water content is very high, and that thing you kind of see me doing very quickly, that's me misting. That is me misting the canvas. I'm picking one part of the canvas to be lighter and another part of the canvas to be darker. So as I'm mixing, I'm actually mixing dogs in purple with the yellow ochre because they're contrasts. And they gray each other out and they kind of neutralize each other. All the makeup and hair people are like, oh yeah, 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 get it. <laughs> so purple and yellow, they'll neutralize each other out and so that way I can use very intense colors and I can use my mister. My mister keeps coming on the canvas and I'm misting again and again. This is stuff we showed you really in depth on the quest. Now you're seeing me pull out these high flow pigments. I'm opening them up and I'm splattering them on the canvas. Can you see the dispersion? Oh yeah. Isn't that beautiful how they bleed? Normally you can only do this on watercolor paper and have the pigment stick because there's an event called underbinding. But because of the absorbent ground, I'm not going to get underbinding. Now I'm not saying I'm following manufacturer's instructions. <laughs> right. When I'm doing this, I've pulled out the alcohol now and you can see the alcohol resist. I'm just splattering the canvas with the alcohol. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. And I'm popping bubbles that I'm seeing. I'm popping all my little bubbles. Again, we talked about all this stuff on the quest, how this was done, right? I've created this incredible flow, expressive piece. Each one's going to be a little bit different. Each one's going to have its own personality. I like to come back a couple times and use alcohol. Again, probably not a recommended media for acrylic, but I feel like as long as it's going to stay attached to the canvas, it's all fair. <laughs> if somebody cares in 500 years, I guess it's a person in conservation's problem to figure out how to save it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just where it's drying here. You can so see we just wanted you to see how it, how it dries. It takes it a while to dry. And there is a thing that happens because of the thick, thick way I put out the inks. There, I put the inks out very thick. And we get that kind of crackling in some of the spots. And if you see sort of like fissures, it looks like it looks like a desert ground in some areas of your ink uh -huh. is drying and it's cracking apart. And that's something I actually really like. That's something I look for. It is a little bit like it's not binding, but I actually like it. It's never come off my canvas. So now I'm like, I intentionally make it happen. <laughs> so this is that weird space that as artists, you and I might break the rules and still succeed. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Totally. This is how we might do this. And this is also how I would show you about six hours worth of process. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's hard. Again, you saw it. None of that's hard. It's not hard to put out washes of paint. No. And darker and lighter color. Like start at the top here and be light and get darker down here. That's not hard. You've done that. It's hard to know as a new artist that you could use absorbent ground and do that with acrylic paint successfully. Mm -hmm. That's the part that's hard to know. And a lot of fine artists won't tell you their process because they're making money on their process. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's their living. If they figured out how to do crazy thick impasto flowers, trust me, trust me, they don't want to tell you how they did it. Because <laughs> they're selling thick impasto flowers and they want to continue to sell their thick impasto flowers. And it's, it's just kind of the nature of art a little bit that we, we experiment in our studios, we research, we adapt we change we succeed and then we hide our little secrets <laughs> oh well no they're gonna see it later it's okay so um you know the thing is is like what i'm really liking doing with this is showing you these processes and these techniques and just go ahead and giving them to you this is what i do in my studio mm -hmm. right and i don't mind you knowing this i want you to know this i want you to see these media i want you to see these gels and these techniques and how they work together I want you to see where rules are broken and fail <laughs> and where rules are broken and yet somehow still succeed. <laughs> so now that this is dry. <laughs> Alan is singing, I broke the law and the art Sherpa won. Yes, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I love it. I went ahead and followed my drawing tutorial instructions. A card. Mm -hmm. Description below. Always open my descriptions. If you're new here to the channel, I know a lot of YouTubers don't necessarily always give descriptions, but some of us do. So always crack every YouTuber's description. It might be an Easter egg of more bonanza information for you. Yes. Right? Because those of us that do, we put like, we use all 50,000 characters. We put a book down there of useful <laughs> information. I try to every time. So it's down there. So I've sketched in with Kids Chalk, yeah. my owl. And I also wrote a wish in. There's only one wish today. We always like to write a wish on our canvas to put well-being into the world. 
And this is a wish for um, Alberta, Canada, that's going through some pretty serious wildfires right now. Yeah. So we're just wishing everybody is okay and everybody gets back to whole and normal and that the fires die out and Alberta, Canada just returns to its awesome Canadian self. Yes. As soon as possible. So we're sending light and love to them. Woo! How's everybody doing? They're doing pretty good. So excited. It's been such a morning, like, juggling and <laughs> surprising. And <laughs> it's been pretty crazy. It has. i got to miss my paint. It's so hot in the studio today, sweetheart. It is warm. What's going on? Oh, it's Texas. It's, That's what's going on. I don't Texas. even know why I asked that question. It's Texas. <laughs> to keep my paint from skinning terribly, I tend to use this spritz bottle. It's a micro mister. You can use the big droplet bottle from CVS. But my mom came over and said, that's ridiculous. Use these. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Um, today, uh, the brushes are going to be our Simply Simmons Brights. I have a uh, number eight, number fours, a number two, and a three-quarter wash. Because somebody has kidnapped Goldilocks. Goldilocks is missing, y'all. We got finder. We got finder. I'm kind of freaking out about it. Yeah. Gonna need to go get some more Goldilocks. But she's really hard to come by these days. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> even the shrimp is having trouble getting some Goldilocks. You can't even get your own. <laughs> and the brush guys are doing everything they can to keep them in. So there they are. Yeah, we even have a hookup with the manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about brushes in the description again. And a lot of times I'll give you the width of a brush. That way, if you have to buy a different brand, you know what size you're looking for. Yeah. Our colors today for this part of the palette... Our hooker's green, that always cracks me up. I'm totally serious. Cad yellow medium. You can save money if you buy hue. Phthalo blue, Mars black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, sometimes called yellow oxide, and titanium white, and also some fluid paint. Yeah, yeah, lots of fluid paint. If you've been here a minute, you know fluid means splatters. <laughs> or eye drops or some sort of detail work, but today fluid means splatters. Cool. So I to get the kind of cosmos feeling to this, uh -huh. what I do is I splatter. I'm going to get my funny splatter brush out. I didn't like these at first, but I'm starting to like them now. This is the Liquitex Freestyle. And I guess I could add that to the description below because these can be hard to find. My mom brought a bunch of these over, and at first I was like, oh, I hate them. But then I figured out the secret to the splatter. What's that? So I go dip, 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 dip. Uh-huh. And then I do this right here. I roll. Oh, wait. There's one more important step. What? Push the subscribe button. Push the subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> so I can keep making these amazing tutorials. <laughs> so see how I'm rolling that? Uh -huh. That's the secret of this brush. Okay. I'm going to stand back a little bit. I may or may not be on oh, camera. No. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, we, have, we have RoboCam. We have RoboCam? Let me, let me go. Go RoboCam. All right. All right. Um, here we go. Well, you can still see you. Destroy cameras in the studio. Ah, oh, see, it's not even that bad. I'm adding some art to my other art. <laughs> I'm just adding some of these star splatters because I want that feeling of stars on my canvas. Uh huh. And because it's cosmic owl. Cosmic. Not sunset owl. Not dawn owl. Sunrise owl. I guess would be. I would never name it dawn owl. Probably always be. Dawn owl. Dawn owl is just. No, I would, do you know mom named some poppies California poppies, but they weren't California poppies? <laughs> she just liked the name. That like just happened. <laughs> it was so funny. All right, I'm going to splatter again. Splatter away. So I'm just flicking this back and I'm letting the brush do the work for me. I'm re again, really starting to like this tool. Didn't like it at first. Now I'm loving it. My cameras are not so happy about it. No. This owl really took it, and the curtains are doing bad. And some lighting. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> everywhere. So I'm not saying this is a neat tool. Don't do this in your $150,000 granite kitchen. <laughs> no. It's a good outside tool. <laughs> <laughs> I get paint freckles every time I do it. What? What are you looking for? You know what I'm always looking for. Which strip it down. The Which, rag. Okay. There's a whole bunch of them underneath your table. I know. That's why whole I had to reach down. All clean. All clean. So <sighs> she's so so cinnamon's really guilty of getting all of the hand towels in the house to become sure to become art towels because as soon as they get paint on them they become permanent art art room towels. So Who needs a hand towel? I need art towels. You, we have all what? of them. <laughs> and then because we use cadmium pigments, then they're like poisons. We can't <laughs> so let them go back into the house. So they just stay in here. 
<laughs> we have a colony of them living underneath her. <laughs> They're no longer food safe. <laughs> I'm a pain in my branch, cheeky boy. All right. I'm going to get my number eight bright. This is an extra firm filament acrylic brush. If you're brand, brand new and you just fell into this and you're watching and you don't know why you're watching, this happens to people, <laughs> right? We use extra firm filaments because it gives us a better result in our painting. Okay. I just assume sometimes people wa wander in like a fly trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a little of my phthalo blue. Notice that I'm working from my outside edge here over to my burnt sienna. And then I'm going to even add a little black to that. And I'm making my deepest color here for my branch. And I'm going to paint in the sketched area of my branch with this dark, dark, dark brown color. If I could get you to switch your tilt, we might. I can use RoboCam. Look at that. RoboCam? We need to maybe switch where RoboCam is. RoboCam moves. He can yeah, go Yeah, but I always find like I'm having to be like, I'm painting like this. Well, it just depends on what side you're on. We need that one that was in the YouTube studios that was on wheels with the face of people who were at other YouTube studios. <laughs> the, 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 the virtual presence? Yeah, I'm thinking. That'd be awesome. We could have we'd have virtual studio guests. Virtual studio guests. All right, so I'm just wandering my little branch up. I got some feelings about this. They're all good ones though, so it's okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I have feelings, but they're all good ones. Wow, we have a lot of people with us. There's over 250 people here. Is there? Yeah. This is a really interesting painting to do. There's a lot of, they keep coming. There's so many people. Hi. This is such an interesting painting to do. And if you break down the segments, it's doable even for somebody who's new in art. That's what I realized when I was looking at this process. Mm -hmm. Like so many things in art, it's doable if you understand the layers and the steps. It's the not knowing the layers and the steps that really holds people back. Not talent or crazy things like that. It's just, do you know how this weird background is done? Yeah. So I tell you. <laughs> Shh, don't tell the other artists. No, they don't mind. Well, some of them do. <laughs> and they leave long comments. <laughs> so so it, I, I, we're going to give a big hug to one of our community members, Ethel. Uh-huh. Hi, Ethel. She fell down. Had a little, oh. little ouch. So she's she has uh, she's on the mend. Yeah, there was actually an Ethel Hutton going on. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, Where did she go? So she has two names, <laughs> depending she, on I, her social de media. Depending, uh, yeah. at least two but names. But we're really glad that you were found and you're okay. And we're really sorry you got hurt. And I hope you feel better really, really soon. Yes. Stop hiding out. Well, I think it's okay to like be out of pocket if you fall down and you get hurt. <laughs> It's an acceptable time to let your email the go. Sure, pets are looking for you, dude. When they look, though, they look. They're like sure pet down, and it's like a whole search. They I'm just show up, and there's just a wall of sure pets. Pull a branch off here. No sure pet left behind. <laughs> it's true. They're they're committed. I'm gonna pull. Hey, Robocam, I'm gonna pull a I'm branch there. up here. Robocam's already there. So I'm gonna pull this up here because I'm gonna have this nice little pine puff happening here. Although it, your Robocam fancies your flowers over the canvas. It does. Yeah, it's like, oh, I want to look at the canvas. I wonder if it stop wearing hats. Oh, no. No. No, never stop wearing hats. So I've got that kind of in there. And I like that little, little nice branch. That darkness is wonderful. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a little more of my blue into this mixture. And see how I'm doing that? I haven't even rinsed it off. I'm just pulling it into that. I'm going to get a little white into it. A little white into it and I'm gonna paint in a lot of the shape that I have here of my little owl I love painting in his little his little shape here I've sketched in and we've talked about it a little bit in chalk but now we're gonna talk about it in paint ah. And it was fun to talk about him in pencil you know sometimes if you do a study the reason I took the study further mm -hmm. In the drawing class, is if you study your subject in pencil and then paint it, you'll actually do better. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Right? You think about, like, all the painters, you know, they'll do a bunch of studies in pencil, and then they'll do some studies in paint, and then they do the painting. Yeah. And then they probably do the painting again. We're repetitive as artists. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your sippy sippy there today? 
Um, well, I already drank it. Um, healthy life choices. It was grapefruit, carrot juice, freshly squeezed. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's good. You're doing sure. You're you're working on 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 feeling better and. I am. I'm working on healthy life choices. You're getting up earlier in the morning so you can paint more paintings for your for all the sherpets. <laughs> Do time lapses. Oh, you're so funny. And drawings. 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 I like doing the drawings actually. They're really kind of fun. What was the what was the, the, the drawn kid who was on the chalkboard who had adventures? The British Simon has drawings. Oh, yeah. That's Simon what loves like. drawing. That was an awesome show. I think that was a really in was that an appropriate show or was that an inappropriate show? I can't tell no. because the problem is my memory's all messed up now because of robot chicken. <laughs> it just broke you know what I'm up. saying? Just <laughs> robot chicken spoofs things, it, and then I don't remember if a show was bad or I just saw it on Robot Chicken. Or you know, yeah, and then it's like stuff like Cannonball Run, which was just genuinely bad, mm -hmm. but good at the time. Yes, exactly. So I'm mixing up this dark color, right, that I've got here. Yep. A little white into that. I'm just coming along, and I'm making this as the underbase for this owl. If I create this sort of blue-black underbase as I paint in his silhouette shape that I've sketched in, because I've sketched in his silhouette shape, right? And you guys will have to let me know how this lesson is working. <laughs> oh, everyone's really enjoying okay, this. Cool. So this is, this is great. There's, there's a lot of people here. There's a really great chat going on. Everyone's really enjoying watching you and this, th they're they're looking forward to doing this kind of backgrounds. This is this really is exciting. a very adventurous piece, but I just want to encourage you if you just want to go for it. I'm not really defining the feet in yet because they're a highly detailed piece. Ah, that's gotcha. what I'm doing. Coming here like this. See, I'm just mixing this dark color. I'm not being that specific because this is what I like to call an underpainting. Yeah. This is what I hang all of the paint that's coming up on top of. Now, I could have just also just roughed him in in single strokes. There's another way of doing this. Yeah. Which we may start covering at some point. The daily painting method. Because <laughs> <laughs> as I was going along, I got better at that, getting my economy in paint. But this layering method is tried and true, and I like it, and it will help you, especially in your wildlife painting. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a good place for that, is in your wildlife painting. I'm going to paint his little tail underneath here. And I guess I'm going to just take the brown over to the blue. I just want it to be slightly different than his body. So I don't lose what I was doing. And I'll paint in that silhouette. You could do it in predominantly blue too. Here, you might not know that you could, but you could. Because again, this is about that first shadow and creating those in and getting that all set. See, I'm sketching him now. It can be Thank hard you. for you guys to see on dark on dark. See if we can get over there a little. Oops. So what I may do for your purposes is I'm going to lighten this leg just a titch. Yeah. So you can see it against the. Right. Yeah. So you can see it against the tail. So I've sketched that in. And I lax it. <laughs> I do. So I'm going to take a little of my blue over to my black. Just blue and black. I'm going to mix quite a lot of white into it. And then I'm going to come along my branch. And I'm going to brush, very dry brush, this little branch texture. So I'm doing short little furtive strokes on the edge here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm pulling down flat multi-directional strokes and I'm kind of leaving this brown right there like a quarter inch not perfectly even but you know yeah something remaining and I'm just trying to create this like little scratchy texture scratchy texture scratchy barky texture it's very dry brush very light pressure in this sort of mid-tone gray. Are, are you using any painting mediums or, or, or mixing mediums there, or is it just water? This is just water right now. Okay. Um, everything I did in the mediums was in the background. And again, um, you saw the time lapse, but go back and watch that quest, because we really talk about this stuff in depth there.
Hopefully we did. I feel like we did. <laughs> Hopefully. And I'm taking this little branch off the canvas and making sure it stays real scratchy. Maybe we're going to come up this little branch here. I'm going to come off this little branch here. See that? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. I don't know if that was fun for you. It was fun for me. <laughs> so fun for that me. That's really cool. So fun for me. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to pull a little of my yellow ochre out. And I'm going to get a little black into it. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Doesn't take much to take your color, which is why I always work from the outside and I don't scoop from the centers. Because I want to retain my color mixtures. I'm going to come in with this color and I'm going to add this sort of like little gold texture and I'm going to be dry brushing it again. I'm not going to paint everything I already have because I want that color too. And I'm trying to talk about this multi-tonal bark that I've got going here. See, he's on a tree, not on a pipe fence. So we have to find a way of telling that story. I'm going to bring this little branch up here to find that a little bit more. Keep telling the little bark story. See how it's breaking up the little bark? Yeah. Yeah, it's just fun stuff. It's just fun stuff. The more you're willing to be in here, you know, and the best thing that you could do for this, you're painting along with me right now, right? And you're kind of... This is definitely, because of all the techniques involved, a three-hoop painting, mm -hmm. right? But in and of itself, each technique, if you just break it down, is maybe one and a half hoots. Right? Break things down in painting into small bites, digestible bits. Don't try to take on the whole canvas in one shot. That's just a life lesson right there. <laughs> Don't take it all on in one shot. Alright, so I've got that nice, isn't that a great little branchy branch? That is. Let me get a little more gray going into this, adding a little more black. So, so now I've taken kind of the hint of the yellow is there, but it's mostly gone. And I'm going to really pull out some white so I get a very light color. Very light. And we're going to weather this. And what I'm doing here is I'm overloaded on the brush, so I'm wiping out and picking up. Wiping out and picking up. I could also wipe off on my towel, as John has pointed out. Yes, on, on your many, many of, towels. Oh, today is so hot, baby. I'm sorry. It's okay. Whew. I'm like having a personal summer. So how many hoots is this? I, again, I think because of the different layers, because you've got to go, you've got a drawing video you really want to cover. You've got a quest video you want to kind of cover the techniques, you know, and it requires you to be a little more independent. I'm going to put this in the three hoot category, even though I don't think any one of these elements is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's the putting them all together, which I think you can totally do. I think that you can totally do this. And... Remember, not everybody's background is going to be the same. These are all going to look very different when they post online. Yeah. You're going to have some, you're going to mix up colors. And also, frankly, when you see the stuff start to happen and dry, you're going to go bananas for a little bit. <laughs> I know I did. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. We haven't even covered, you know, like on the deer when I tip the thing up so it all runs down. Oh, yeah. Right. And then I stop it and then dry it and I tip the thing up so it all <laughs> runs down. We have any, ooh. Hello. It's we okay. haven't even covered that. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Well, we couldn't figure out how to tell those stories. But now we do. I yeah. That's that has really been the block. Is like I could maybe do the eagle now. Hmm. I could show you guys how to paint that uh, eagle. Because now I can show you all the techniques required between the RoboCam and the ability to put in a clip live, and then I can answer questions as you're going, which I love. So see that nice, defined yeah. little branch? Now, acet will acetone work in exchange for alcohol? No. Be, that would no, be bad. No, please don't use acetone. That would be bad. That's, that <laughs> and we'll cover why when we do how to report pair completely messed up brushes. <laughs> <laughs> acetone and acrylic paint are deadly enemies. Alcohol is a resist. Acetone is an acid for it. It dissolves glues. Yeah. 
dissolves the binders. Yeah, if you crazy glue yourself to anything, don't freak out. Just add, just get nail polish remover and you'll be free. Hmm. Just weird little things you might not know. That now you know. Now you know. I don't know why you needed to know it, but now you know it. So I've gotten my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to pull out a little bit of this fun hooker's green and a little bit of my thalo. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mix the two of them together. And I'm going to get this really wonderful deep pine. Right? Yeah. And then I'm going to come up to this branch here. And I'm going to... And if you guys have painted with Angela Anderson a little bit, you will have kind of pined a little with her. Yeah. So this will be like, oh, I know this. I know this. And that's okay. You know, you guys can take a technique and carry it with you no matter where you learn it. And add it to the other techniques you learned. And how fun is that? Yeah. And I'm going to just make this a nice... This is the dark color that I'm wanting to... Ooh, I got some black, but that's okay. <laughs> a lot of times when I go, I'm not even that worried about it. All right. Are we okay? Am I in the way? What am I doing? Oh. Needs juice. Is it almost out of battery? It warns you. It's so, it's so considerate. So I'm just coming on the edge of my brush here. And I'm doing this like flicking technique. Can you guys see this? I'm just flicking these out. I'm just flicking these out. Building this nice little, and I think we all kind of recognize this weird little palm structure. <laughs> we've seen it a few times, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've been outside, unless you haven't been outside. Or you live someplace, this is, YouTube's everywhere, so maybe you don't have a pine. This is a pine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pine. If you've never seen one, because you know what? Sometimes you haven't seen something yet. That's no big deal. I haven't seen volcanic life under the ocean. Here, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that it is. I'm just saying, you just, you know, you don't have to be all things all the time. All things all the time are not required. Just the things you need to be in the moment. That's all you need to be. Yeah. Just what you need to be right now. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything. And you don't have to be able to do everything perfectly. You just have to be in the moment that you're in. Nothing else is required. Look at that. Puffy puff. Huff, puff, puff, Couple puff, puffs. Puff. Hufflepuff. <laughs> Team Hufflepuff. There's been some talk about some Harry Potter stuff. Oh, yeah, there has. There's been some talk. I'm going to take my yellow ochre over to my hookers. Mm -hmm. Like you do. <laughs> like you do. Like you do. I'm going to add some white to this. All right. Maybe a little more yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get this sort of sagey mint color. There's this highlight in pines that you get. That's unique to them. That's really rather lovely. This dusting that they have. See? And I like to do it, if I can, while it's still wet. Because look what happens. The paint underneath mixes into it. Oh, Isn't yeah. that nice? So you push your canvas forward there just a little bit next Which time. Which way? No, this the, way? The, the, other, the mixing board. Any? Oh, yeah. See? Right. I always knock something down when I do that. That's right. Not situationally observant. So I'm just pulling this little out here. See? And I'm not worried about the stroke being perfect. The stroke is very broken. This is not necessarily neat stroke. It's very painterly. We talk about painterly a lot. But look how lovely that is. Doesn't take a lot to make it lovely. Yeah. That's why I'm like, there's a lot going on, but you can do it. We doing is. it? I, I just wandered away there. You wandered away. So I'm just kind of coming here with these highlights. I'm letting the wet paint underneath kind of work with this nice sage I mixed. And you think about it, like when you're kind of there and you're like assessing this, you're like, well, that isn't really particularly harder than the daisies we did the other day. And it's not. Yeah. Nothing here is intrinsically hard. Now I'm going to come in. 
with a little of the yellow ochre in the white. Make kind of this light color. And I'm going to, at the top of the head, put in a V right here. I'm going to bring a circle around for his little heart. You know they have it, the little heart shape. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell that story somehow. Right, so there we go. And then I'm going to come off the little wing here with this light color and I'm going to sketch in that wing and I'm going to sketch in the front of his belly to his leg. Cool. Very so cool. That lays in what I'm going to be painting. That blocks it in. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. It's like I'm going to get some yellow ochre. I haven't even rinsed my brush. I haven't even rinsed it. You're such a rebel. No I rinsing am. that brush. Never rinsing my brush. And I'm just a very dry brush in short strokes. This is, again, if you didn't remember, this is a number four bright. Wonderful tool. A good, firm bright will do a lot for you. All right, coming here. And I'm not going to take this past this yoke here on him. All right. I'm just taking these down. This yellow ochre, right? If you get the yellow ochre from Michaels, it is transparent. If you guys remember my paint review, I was like, what's going on with the golden? It's because all the Michaels carry the transparent one. They don't care the full pigmented one. Oh. Yeah, didn't know. Didn't know. I knew they had two kinds. I just didn't know they were not sharing. I did not know. And sometimes you want your ochre, which is traditionally transparent anyways, to be transparent. Sometimes you do. Get a little scotch, just a smidge, just a small amount of black. I got too much, but that's okay. Come over into your yellow ochre, your yellow oxide, knocking it back. Now I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to come down his body with these short little strokes. I'm just going to enjoy. Oh, it's so hot, baby. I, <laughs> I mean, you. you're about to have to turn on the AC or get a fan on me or something. <laughs> I'm going to fall down. <laughs> Sherp down. <laughs> I'm just brushing this on the belly. I am just brushing this on the belly. Okay. I might get a little of my phthalo into this mixture crazily enough I don't want it to go green I just want it to be knocked back I still want it to be very yellow right I don't want it to be green I'm just taking the colors back and I'm just dusting 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 how light that brush is yeah yeah now on here we're going to kind of, I'm going to come here and I'm going to, when we talked about it in the sketching, I'm going to do that line of feathers, which goes down, up, down, uh -huh. into that leg. It's a little more yellow oxide, so it shows against the background. I'm going to leave this area dark. And I'm going to take the brush stroke to the side, flicking and giving my leg that shape as I go. Cool. Right. Do that right there, like that. We'll do something similar right here. I'm going to kind of flick off and then take it back, pulling it, and let these feathers that are here along the front of this leg come off. Oh, wow. But I will stop before I get down to this, like, low part. Why is that? Well, because we know he's got, it gets real, like, featherless around the foot. And we're going to detail paint in the foot in a minute, but. Gotcha. Like, this is sort of a detail painting. Would it ruin the broadcast to have the AC on? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can probably manage. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, I'll get that for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm like, I'm like having a whole moment here. It's like going down my back. I'm like, it's like, I love teaching painting, but this is like, the lights today, we need to switch to LEDs is what it is. Thank you, sweetheart. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. I'm sorry the video isn't as pretty, but I, I just dying. Hi, sweetie. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, oh, that's, oh, immediately helpful. <laughs> just immediately. I'm going to wipe my brush off and just be so grateful right now. You have a really good mic, so it doesn't, it doesn't pick that up. It doesn't? No. Okay, so it's just a little bit ugly. Yeah, we, we, we'll have we to work that out in it. the new set or something, like do great or something, because, oh. Yeah, we'll hide it. It's getting, this summer, it's getting hot, hot, hot. It is warm. It's, you're so cute. It's like, it's warm. No, it's hot. <laughs> it's not warm. It's hot. So I mix this gray here. I'm going to come along the front of this wing and kind of define this out. I'm going to let a little of what I painted underneath here sort of peek through. Can you see how it's peeking through? Yes. My brush stroke is light. It has a slight curve to it. And I'm going to have a little bit of that right here as it comes along the body. Just a little bit. Just a bit. I don't want to go crazy or nothing. And we'll get under here, too. That's what I'm going to do. So it's uh, so everyone in the chat's like, well, how hot is it there? And then it was like, it's 88 degrees. It's like, well, hot. But it's much hotter in the studio because we've been shooting video all day. Like all day. Yeah. So, which is why you're still waiting for something <laughs> to process over on that other video that is not there yet. <laughs> all right. So, right under the belly, I want to leave this dark shadow here. I'm going to come right here. Can you see that little curve? Uh huh. So, I'm leaving that there and I'm going to start coming down on the tail. I'm going to pull this color down. Just pulling these colors down. I'm going to try to keep in the direction of the feathers. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep in the direction of the feathers. Yeah. Starting to tell their story, and they're starting to be defined. If I need to come on my edge and tap into this feather on the leg, there's another layer of it, so it's okay. Okay. So we're not that worried. And we're going to leave this quite dark here. All right. And then I'm going to come to the wing. And my first layer of my wing is a little too much black. <laughs> if that ever happens to you, just go ahead and wipe off the brush. That's why I'm like, don't scoop from the middle. Because even coming from the side, sometimes you'd be like, too much black. Yeah. So Alan was asking, should we have done the tail feathers and then the legs? No, because I'm layering, layering, layering. And you guys can, if you need to change the order, you can. I sometimes will do things in a particular order so that you guys can see, like, and I'm still working on the waterfall things because the dark on dark rocks got real challenging. So I might have to think about how I'm showing you guys the rocks just so that it translates on film. Right. So if you want to do that, that's okay to do the feathers beforehand. But you're fine doing them in this order because we still have another layer to come in on. Since we're layering so many layers. Right. It just, we layer all the layers, Alan. So many layers. <laughs> all right. So I've made this dark, dark color. And I'm just coming here. I've darkened my burnt sienna. It's lighter than the underneath painting. And I'm kind of just making these little chunks. These sort of chunk strokes. They're about, I don't know, an inch long. Does that about look about an inch long to you, babe? Yeah. It's so weird to narrate what you're doing. <laughs> I narrate my own life. I'm just coming along the edge here and I'm just keeping those chunks going. You know, some of the stuff that I did in the pencil sketch, I might not retain in the painting. That's another thing that you might not know when you're painting from a sketch. I might decide that for the purposes of the painting, all that information is not necessary. Because I'm not trying to do something highly realistic. I'm trying to do something very emotional. Yeah. These daily paintings were all very emotional. It really was the most cathartic thing ever miss it a lot yeah it'll break you down and rebuild you as an artist break you down <laughs> break you down there'll be weeping <laughs> there'll be weeping all right so i am gonna add a little blue into my brown mixture like you do wipe off my brush and i'm gonna come Maybe get a little white into that. And I'm going to come here along the top, the front of the wing. 
right there, a little bit up the neck with that light color. And then on the little legs here, as I'm coming down, I might do another layer with that. Do you see that there? Yeah. Getting a little more of it. Layers, layers, layers. Maybe a little bit coming here. Lighter, lighter than the tail though. And that's going to be the hard thing, is seeing it and knowing that it needs to be lighter than the tail. Not white. It may even feel a little bit like white, but it's not. All right. Just keep this up. I'm going to make a dark gray here. And I might come kind of tap this little shadow in and take it down here, down the tail a little bit tap a little bit that there. Just filling it out, just thinking it out. Gotcha. Right? I'm going to take this little gray blue shadow that I got going and I'm going to start kind of maybe tapping in some of the shadows in the feathers here. No, don't And I'm using a combo of my reference photo, which you guys have from Paint My Photo. Uh-huh. And also I'm going to tap it right here, bring it down here. I think that there's a little bit of shadow right here. And also my painting. Gotcha. You should always, <coughs> always have a reference photo, even if you're painting from a painting. Yes, definitely. Okay. Even if you're painting from your own painting. <laughs> yeah, babe? I was going to ask you about mediums here. I would be happy to answer the medium question. So... Donna was asking, can I use crackle medium on the canvas to make the other paint in the painting look like this? To get the blending, no. To get the crackling, sure. You can experiment and find a way through. But, I mean, it may go south on you. It may totally work. All I'll say about that is do a couple tests first. Experiment. J yeah, experiment before you get into the painting that you put, like, 16 hours into. And I mean, experienced artists, we'll do this all the time. We'll be like, we know better. And we'll still be like, I don't know, throw some on there and see what happens. You've been working all week. And then it's like, it's like on fire. You're like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> and then you're like, man. So my just two cents of wisdom is do some test pieces and make sure you're consistently getting the result you're looking for and then do anything. And while you're experimenting, don't forget to like, comment, and, and subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> because it totally helps out making sure that YouTube knows that you guys were here and you like what you saw. And yeah. To make you know more of it. We want so. to make more yeah. for you. Pulled out a little black. Pulled out a little yellow ochre. want to make sure it's more into the yellow. Too much black in the brush. Wipe it off. There we go. Back again. I'm going to get some very, very light 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 i'm gonna come here with these lighter 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 feathers here lighter 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 see how i'm dashing them and they feel like feathers i see you dashing away so you can texturally get a feather done okay i'm gonna put pull some of this right here too and if it, that's coming down here you can texturally do a feather or you can realistically like you can sit there and spend a hundred hours it's a completely different thing of doing hyperrealism. That's about really slowing things down and really getting drilled into the highs, highlights and lowlights. But there's a beautiful type of wildlife painting where you capture more of the spirit of the animal than maybe every single hair. Right. Not that you can't do both. And I have seen artists that have successfully, fantastically, brilliantly done both. Right? Yeah. You know, and take advantage of places like Paint My Photo. Right? Yep. And, you know, look around because I think, like, there's a there's a bird, there's a cardinal on a branch that was very inspiring. And then oh, there yeah. was this snowy owl. And then there you go. This is a barn owl, right? This is a barn owl. Thank you. Not I don't know why I keep owl. calling them snowy. Because I just did a snowy owl. Yeah. We just did Grumpus the Owl, and Grumpy was snowy. He's snowy owl. Your snowy owls are all so good. I really hope some of you guys will go for this. 
Because if a lot of you paint this, then you're more likely to see stuff like the deer and, and the horses and some of the more, you know, crazy paintings in your three hoot collection. I'm pulling some of this light color down here. I might do a little bit at this tip here, but not the whole tail, just a little, maybe at the front end. So Lori <laughs> just got some Daniel Smith uh, grounds. Oh, you're gonna love them, girl. It's just on another level. Yeah. She was like, are those okay? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, for watercolors, they're totally okay. And what I will say is you could put them on and then do watercolors. They're not really designed for acrylics, but they are designed for watercolors. Remember, you can always paint acrylics over watercolors, something I do do. Right. I just like the fact that I can do an all acrylic painting and have it be looking like this. And people are like, how does the paint not fall off the canvas? And I'm like, oh, it's my secret. Except that I put it on YouTube and it's not secret no more. Right. <laughs> It's not particularly secret. Not anymore. I'm pulling some just, some just burnt sienna. And I'm coming on this wing. These barn owls have varying levels of softness. In this part, I'm going to have kind of a shorter stroke at the top here till about here. Yeah. All right. And I'm just dashing. Do you see the dashes? I see the dashes. And I'm just trying to dash this in and break up this pattern. And just have fun. Oh, I'm feeling so much better. I got to tell you, the painting today was exactly what I needed. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever get, I get in here to paint with you, but I end up feeling better. Do you guys ever feel better when you paint? I feel so much better when I paint. So much better. Yeah. It just, I love that I get to do this now. This is like my daily painting because I'm almost daily with you guys. Maybe we will be someday. It's just a good feeling to get in and create. I'm going to pull some long brush strokes longer here where we would have the flight feathers. Gotcha. Just a little bit. Not realistically, just that sense of it, if that makes sense. Just the sense of it, if it makes sense to you. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull out a little of my brown and a smidge of my black. All right. Get this nice deep color again. It's a weird deal. And then I'm going to come back and add some of this this to the top. See that? Oh layer, yeah. layer, 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 layer. Layering the painting is so nice. Oh, he's starting to come together. I love him. I love him, guys. <laughs> I'm starting to love him. I'm Looking pull, really good. Pulling a lot of white into my brush now. And I'm getting this sort of cappuccino creamy color. And then I'm going to come here into the wing. And I'm going to add some of these cappuccino feathers, maybe a little bit here, just at the tip. Look at that. Isn't he pretty? Wow. He's so pretty. He's coming together. He is. I know. I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. He's so, so, so much fun. So I'm going to pull a little of these feathers out, maybe add just a little gold to this mix, but it's still quite light. And I'm going to start working his little adorable, sweet, fluffy little head. I think barn owls, probably if you're a mouse, are never sweet. <laughs> like I was looking at the talons on some of these. So the guy, Paul, that does these bird photos on Paint My Photo, I think he did my eagle, was the reference for my eagle as well. Yeah. Dude, he really captures the fact that these things have knives on the end of their feet. Knives. Oh, yeah. It's not even like some small thing. It's knives. So see these little short dashy strokes? Yep. I'm going to not rinse my brush. Advanced painters don't rinse their brush. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some just of this yellow ochre on the height of everything. Do we see it? Uh, yeah. They're, they, they've named this owl Ozzy. Ozzy? Yes. Ozzy? Ozzy. All right, Ozzy. <laughs> Hi, Ozzy. How are you? Are you a cosmic owl? Are you friends with Finn and Jake? Do you know the secrets of the universe and travel through time? Yes, you do. You are so sweet. Be nice to me. <laughs> Talk to your paintings. They'll be good to you. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. He's actually coming together really fast. So I'm going to pull into a smaller brush. You can sketch this in um, with your chalk if you need to. I'm going to just put it in 
with my paint. So we talked about this in the sketch where his eye position is versus his beak. So his beak is going to be right around here. It touches the wing a little bit. So we want the beak right there. And if the beak is right there, then angularly we know we have an eye. So we come up at an angle. And we're going to paint first that round front shape of the eye. And we're going to curve it back and then bring it down. And then there's the eye. We know where the beak is. We know where the eye is. And then mm -hmm. this is all fluff, 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 fluff. So <laughs> that's going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> fluffy, fluffy, fluff. I'm going to get some dark black. Well, there's not like a light black. <laughs> well, actually, there is. I got to do a black quest. And some blue. And I'm going to just paint in the basic shape of the beak, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later more with my paint in just a second. But I'm going to get in the eye as well just so that it's in this nice dark color on the inside. Can you see that there? Mm -hmm. Just make sure I've got that because I can refine that and think that out a little bit. Now I might get into a smaller brush, my number two bright. These brushes are so economical. They're like under $3 a piece, I think. Yeah. Completely worth getting. You know, if you can be abundant and get yourself a grip, go ahead. If you can't, don't worry. A few brushes will get you through. Yeah. So I'm going to take that dark color that I mixed. And I'm going to add a little white. Maybe a little of this yellow. Oh, that's going green on me because I had blue in there. Rinse, 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 rinse. <laughs> I'm going to actually go this way. I'm going to take a little black. By the way, I don't even know what I put out the cad yellow for. Ooh, you haven't used it yet. I have not used it. It's just there to look good. You know, I think I thought I was going to mix it in the pine trees, and then I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't think anyone... Think for your like dollop of cad yellow <laughs> that you've used. Don't thumb me down. <laughs> I'm sorry. You sign your name with it. <laughs> I'll sign my name with it. That's what I'll do. It's for your signature. <laughs> Shh. Shh. All right. So I'm going to come up the top of the beak with this lighter color. And I'm going to create this nice little highlight. I'm not going to paint all the dark out. I just want the front of it highlighted. Yeah. And then I'm going to come with just another, get another layer of white. And then right, right on the front. It's, so it's not all the way white, but you can see that it's got quite a reflection. Yeah. Then get your black, crazily enough. And then go ahead and put that little nose shadow right there. That's all you've got to do about that beak. Let that brush rest for a minute. Pull out your four. Pull out your four. I'm going to switch water because i got to get back into light colors again and my paint is getting all messy. Mm. It's getting all messy, John. It's messy. <laughs> messy boots. And I'm going to start working out the face. So I'm going to do a little black and a little yellow. I'm going to get a little white in there. And this will be my dark color on the face. <laughs> right? So in the front of the eye, I'm going to come forward with this. And I'm going to pull this out. See, I'm flicking this out. This is going to be kind of on an angle towards the nose. See this here? There's a little bit of it back here. Coming up here. A little bit around the eye. But not that much there. So this is where the, the predominant amount of that deeper shadow is. I'm going to wipe my brush a bit and pull my white paint and start pulling out this rough around the eye. So it's a dry brush. I'm pulling it around. And how I'm keeping my paint from being too white is the brush is super dirty. Can you see how dirty that is? Oh, yeah. So that's that's something that I'm doing. And that's something I see a lot of artists do is we just depend on the fact that our brush is dirty. We're like, it's okay. My brush is dirty. It's painterly. 
It's paint. Well, it, what it is is I know that pigment's going to tone it, and I'm at the same time that I'm looking for exact colors, I'm looking for grayscale information. Huh. Craziness. And if I need to get a little more pigment and come over here and get a little more and lighten it up, so I've got control. I'm going to come here kind of around the eye. And I'm going to start the highlighting. And then as I'm moving towards the front, I'm pulling a little more white. Because on this guy, if you look at the reference photo, he is flurfy. He's got a flurfy front. See the flurfy front? Yeah. That's his flurfy front. And I'm just kind of pulling that line. Flurfy. And then we're going to start pulling some of this fluff around the beak. There it goes around the beak. If you need to go back with a little black. And get right in the corner here. You can. That sort of soft dovey gray. And just talk about that a little bit more. You can wipe your brush. But uh -huh. don't rinse. And pull some white. And then we're going to very lightly dry brush this brighter, brighter white. See it? Totally. Dab, 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 dab right there. Coming around. The paint layers underneath reinforce it and inform it. And you want that. And we're pulling it around his eye. We're going to kind of dab down here. But letting, see it's a dry brush, it's almost like sketching. And I'm just, the brush is so dry and the pigment's just dusting off. And that helps me get a blend even when I don't have oils. There we go. So he's got this going on here. He's got his eye and his feet to resolve and we've got to do his little dots. You know about the little dots, John? Yeah, the little dots are cool. You like the dots? Yeah. So obviously you could splatter the dots, which I think I did the first time I splattered them. And that was a lot of fun for me, but I don't think, I think with my current splattering tool, I would not get a good result. Huh. So I might use some fluid paint by Golden. This is the soft body. You could use a craft paint though. I'm gonna just load my brush up. I'm going to come here and I'm going to drop some dots. Drop some dots. I'm going to drop some dots. See how that makes a difference to him looking like a total barn owl? He's dotted. Yeah. Give him some dots here. Nature is breaking up his pattern. You know he's a predator. An apex predator. Apex predator. If you're a mouse, he's a total apex predator. Well, no, I mean, uh, the, the barn does, uh, I mean, owls don't have any other natural predators. Nothing eats owls? Nothing Nothing hunts owls as regular prey. I like owls even better. Right? You know, humans are about the worst thing that happened to owls. Now I'm going to come and do the same on the wing. All right, I'm going to come do these little dots on the wing. And what will be important is on the wing later, I'm going to come back with a white dot which I'll probably hit when I do the reflection of the eye. So we've got these little dots. Trick to the dots is break up the pattern. If you can't splatter the dots, you're gonna wanna definitely break up the pattern. Make some smaller, more recessed into the feathers. You know, break them up. Break them up. Break them up. Break them up. So now he's got his little dots that he would have. And I gotta paint his little footers. His little feet. His little feeties. His little feet. I think I'm gonna do my detail brush to do this. Yeah. So I'm gonna get my mister out because I've let everything skin over. Where did it go? Why did you oh, do that? Because I wasn't want. Paint. It was hot. Paint faster, sure. How was it this hot and stuff wasn't like drying earlier in like two seconds? Why were we waiting for stuff to dry? I don't know. All right, so I pulled out a little black, and I pulled out a little blue. 
And I've got that blue-black color we like to use as our shadow. You could even ground it with a little bit of brown. And I'm going to paint in his little feet. And I like calling him his little feet. So I'm going to take a little toe around here. I'm going to curve it. So I'm curving it. Is it curved? It is. I think so. I'll try to get in there and look closer. I'm curving it. I think I changed my mind on my drawing. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> here. And I'm curving one over the back. So they've got three talons, right? And a toe. I'm gonna make sure I get the knuckles in here. So I'm just gonna curve this over, maybe show a little kind of talon curving around here. And they grip branches in all kinds of ways. Pull that up. And then I might have a little claw come here. You see that little claw? Yeah. We're just saying, hey, he's got a little branch. I don't like what I'm doing here. I'm gonna change my mind. You I'm gonna get my sketch up. What are you doing? I thought of something better during my sketch. I'm gonna paint that out and get my sketch up. That's okay. what I'm doing. All right. Here's what you have to do when you make a mistake. You mistaken it? Well, if you, yeah, I, mis I make mistakes. I, because the painting underneath is dry, I'm gonna hit this with my mister real fast. Okay. Because <laughs> the painting is dry, and I'm gonna kind of just wipe it off. This works if your painting underneath is dry. Oh wow, this is really cool. We just, uh, whoop, just there it goes. Yeah, gone. I don't like it, so go away. <laughs> Look, gone, 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 yeah. gone, gone, gone. That it, works. I guess it lightened a little bit of that purple there, just a touch. Huh? Did it pull up some of that purple a little? No, no, no. Oh, no, wow. this is just a messy cloth. If it's dry and it's cured, it will stay down. Cool. And I'm gonna follow my sketch because I liked what I did with my sketch. And I started following too many references, and I like I like what was happening with the feet here, so I'm going to continue what was happening with the feet here. And I was looking at the previous painting, and I had changed my study, and that's what happened to me. I got lost in my painting. You could get lost in your painting. I, if I, it's dry, spritz, 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 wipe it away. Sometimes with student paint, it won't work. With Golden, with Matisse, with Liquitex, you can get away with some nonsense. Now, Some nonsense. Could you do this painting with tempera paint? Egg tempera? Tempera. Tempera. Yes. Gouache? They said, uh, Nicole wants to know, would tempera paints work uh, for the Not dots? Not like acrylics. I mean, there's a way to paint something like this oh, with no, tempera, the, but the, the layering would be different. The dots. The dots. Huh? Sorry, for the dots. Well, it, would, okay. Would so tempera the, paints work for the dots? The I mean, yeah, you could... You could do all kinds of mixed media on the dots. How uh, permanent they are, I don't know until you fix them down. Like, temper paints don't really bind to the acrylic. They sit on the surface. Oh. Like, they sit on the surface of all all things. In paper, it's a little bit absorbent. But you still, like, if you think about, like, even egg temper, it had some affixing issues. So it's just about how will it affix, and can you, like, spray varnish that down? You might be able to spray varnish that sucker down. Maybe. Like, down. Experiment. Experiment. But maybe not. <laughs> All right. A and tempers are much closer to gouaches and watercolors than acrylics or oils. So now I'm following my sketch. I'm bringing this toe out here. I'm giving myself a joint and another joint, and I'm already liking it better so much. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew I had come up with I was like, why is this foot so awkward? It's an awkward foot. And I, when I ma made him originally, I didn't make him awkward, so I was like, what is going on in a joint? See? Isn't that better? Yeah. And then this claw goes behind. And then it makes sense. Oh, so much better. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> and I got to show you guys how to fix a mistake, so that's always good. I'm going to make a little bump here and paint a little claw around. And now I feel better about that. So I got that. I'm going to do the other little foot. Happily. Thrilled, even. And this little claw is going to come off here. And his little back foot now is going to come off here, and that's fine. Because that's how he would grab a branch, and it makes sense to my brain now. Because even if you can't draw what you can't see, your brain will remember stuff and tell you it's wrong and give you grief. Huh. It won't just leave you alone and be like, oh, that's fine. You got the gist. It'll be like, no, no, no. 
that's not how I remember it. And then you're like, well, help me draw it. And then your brain's like, oh, well, I don't remember it that well. I just remember it enough to give you anxiety about it. <laughs> just to pest you, but not actually help you <laughs> through your current conundrum. So there we go. I've got these little claws coming around and that little foot going off the back. Isn't that great? That's really good. I'm going to pull some white into my brush. I'm going to do that. I'm going to come along the top very lightly, in the front of the foot. I'm going to pull this down and just drop a highlight on the foot. And then again at the knuckle a little bit and then drop a highlight down. But not the highlight for the claws yet. Claws are shinier. Come up front, the front of the foot. Drop this little, brush these little strokes back. Maybe one here, a little there. Cross the knuckle. Now, I'm going to get even whiter. I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm going to get even lighter in my paint for the reflection. Not all the way white, white. Right? But, but real light. And I'm going to make sure I put a little claws or sharp reflection. Little dashes and then claws are sharp. See how those claws are sharp? Yeah. All right. So claws are sharp. Things we've learned. <laughs> <laughs> and owl eyes. Owl eyes. So I'm going to get back into my black and my blue. I'm going to come here just a little bit on the inside of this dark color. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to reinforce this shape again. Right? And then I'm going to come and make just an ever so slightly less dark color, but still quite dark. Then I'm going to come and do just on the underside here and a little bit over the top right there. It's not a lot. It doesn't take a lot to do these guys. These guys are actually done on the reflections. Huh. I'm going to pull into that gray I just mixed, but I'm going to get it lighter. My brush is a little bit dry. And I'm going to come, and at the front of the eye, I'm going to dry brush in a very light first reflection. This is a distant light that's reflecting on the oculus. It's not that bright. All right. Then I'm going to get into my white white, which I still have over here, the fluids. Yeah. And I'm going to make a little cluster of reflections right there. And here's what's important. Everybody always forgets, but makes a big difference. The eye is wet. And where the eye meets a lid, there's always a series of reflections. Oh, yeah. If you remember those, people will tell you, Oh, you so understand the eyes. <laughs> It's really you're just like, I just understand reflections, but okay. Oh my gosh. That looks so great. We did a Cosmic Owl That's... on YouTube Live. I hope it was good. I hope you got the information you needed to accomplish this painting because I think you can. I think you have it in you to make this. I think that you guys could do this. So basically, you're going to make sure you got the quest down so you're like, you understand the materials. Your hack for this, if you don't have the absorber crown, is like we talked about in the quest, you could do this with a watercolor on watercolor paper and a watercolor background and then paint the owl in acrylic. Yeah. Right? Though I hold, if you can, if it's feasible, don't stress your budgets, just only if it's feasible, I think the ground is a great thing. Mm -hmm. As do I think that the high flow paints are. Yeah. I don't want to give say a big thank you to all. We had a whole bunch of new viewers with us today. We had a great group of moderators. Thank you to Mona and Kim and Flame and Bonnie and Ghost Hostess and all, and, and, and all the guys out there. And I think I saw Mark out there and Hi, Mark. all of our people. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. And we're going to see you guys at the Easel really soon. Yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. All right. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye.